Realization dari Trisisim TV di mana kita sudah buat grup untuk registrasi dan juga kondisinya cukup lancar kondusif nggak ada demonstrasi sama sekali jadi jam satu kita akan berangkat
aku akan hari ini ada panggilan Tuhan dalam hidupmu ada Tuhan hari ini sekarang ini adalah waktunya yang cukup kau lakukan berusaha menemui Yesus Come on now. Let's go across to these uncircumcised pagans. Maybe God will work for us. Father, I don't want to do this, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So I'm going to go see about this. I've got a maybe faith, enough faith to do it and not know the conclusion, but trust God in the process. It's a maybe faith. Your failure does not define your future. If you'll continue to put it in my hands, I've called you for a purpose and your pain will not negate it. Trust me. Church and Fati, sing it out together. Come on. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. That you came along.
ocean water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started still stand in our life God when we, when we believe that you are such a great God you're such a beautiful God we will calm you in this place God You 
welcome to 316 youth ministry i hope everyone is okay i hope i hope everyone is well you know uh i hope everyone is uh, healthy i'm really really excited to share the word of god today i'm really uh, grateful for pastor juan for inviting me uh to uh, to be able to share the word of god today uh in this 316 youth ministry online service platform so today uh, we're gonna learn about uh, about things that uh, it sounds very spiritual i guess yeah you're really prophetic but it is really essential in our daily life in our christian life so today i'm uh, i'm giving the topic of hope for a fire hope for a fire right if you're writing a note you can write hope for a fire so we're gonna learn about how we can enlarge how can we uh, stretch our hope through the fire before we begin let's pray uh let's pray for the for this uh for the gospel uh thank you jesus for for everything you've done in our life until today thank you for giving us uh your very best thank you for uh uh, uh we are having a healthy healthy body healthy uh, mental health thank you for everything you've done in this couple of months in this in this last year i know you are not finished you are still working from uh, for us through our life please god um, bless us so we can understand your word today so we can learn something uh, new today and we can apply it in our life bless also uh, me who are gonna preach the gospel who are gonna share so so let every word that i'm uh, i'm i'm speak is your word speak freely god and then let your spirit fill our hearts so we can have focus anywhere we are we can learn something new Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus, we we'll be pray. Amen. So today, uh, I'm gonna ask you: Have you ever played with fire? Right. I think it's it's something like, uh, of course, it's it's like forbidden in our childhood, right? Uh, our parents usually say, "Hey, jangan main dengan api." Then please don't play with fire, right? You can get you can get burned. You can uh, you can get sick. You can get uh, your skin get uh, your uh, roasted, right? Roasted skin, right? So fire is something that can be disastrous, but also can be a beneficial. Uh, in the primitive days, in the early 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 days of humanity, um, fire can be used for protection and to warm uh, to to warm up the body right because there's a little a little uh, really limitation on tools that they have and then fire also promotes civilization uh, across the the age of uh, the world right when they are when we are coming into the industrial age they are using fire to power up machine trains uh, a lot of things and also fire can be used to create uh, stuff right when you cook something you need fire when you uh, sometimes you also there's a, if you eat sushi you know sometimes they also have the burner right there, and then you put the sushi and then boom right they also use fire so fire can be all can be used also for to create things right there's a uh, interesting part uh because the bible also mentioned about fires in uh, several cases right uh, let me open it first right so the bible also mentioned about fires bible used uh, several uh, several stories and also symbolize how fire can be used or uh, signify something especially in acts chapter 2 verse 1 until 4 is during the pentecost day yes you know right uh, you know the story when the, the the disciples are gathering in one place and then they start praying they ask for the holy spirit to come to fill their hearts and then suddenly a sudden wind came into the room and then there's also they can see uh, tongues of fire uh, above their head right so fire also signifies that god is present it is god's present it is god Usually fire can be used to signify that God is present. 
that God is here. That is the fire is God Himself. If you remember that Moses, uh, when he encountered God in the in the bush, right? So the bush is getting uh, get caught up with fire, right? But the bush is not burned down, you know, and stuff. But uh, God used through uh, a fire to communicate with Moses on that day. So uh, so Bible has things also about fire. Because fire has a lot of uh, meaning and symbolize. Now, this day we are facing a lot of uh, uncertainties. Sometimes people can be get lonely. People can get hopeless. People can get stagnant. People just uh, think of surviving the day. Every day, every single day is just normal days. There, there, there is not enough passion. People are not filled with the spirit. People are getting bored. People are getting stuck. People are getting uh, depressed. People are getting anxiety. People are getting um, people are getting uh, hopeless because their life is being contained in a solitude event after event after event. You cannot go anywhere. You cannot meet an anybody. It's it's really a limited. So what's important this day? Our faith is important, yes. Pastor Juan and also Pastor Eradi already teach us in the last week and also last two weeks how we keep our faith strong during these days, during the storm, right? So I want to, I want to share how we can stretch our hope these days, how we can stretch our perseverance this day, how we can stretch our faith through our hope these days because this day is a challenging day it's a testing days god wants to stretch our hope god wants to stretch our faith by relying on him we're gonna learn from the story of elijah when he is uh competing with the baal prophets in elijah and uh, in first kings chapter 18. On the first Kings chapter 18, there's a story where Elijah fight against the Baal prophets. Let me give you a little bit a little bit of background on what's happening on the on the chapter. So it, it is interesting that Israel uh, the Israel is uh, experiencing drought uh, for three and a half years. So we can we can see that water is really something expensive on that day. Maybe it's it's like expensive as mask, you know. As you know, in twenty twenty, mask, you know, the the medical mask is really really expensive. You know, like one box it costs like five hundred uh five hundred k rupiah. You know, where where usually it's only like to uh, twenty thousand, maybe thirty thousand, fifty fifty thousand, and then suddenly. Last year is just skyrocketed until fifty thousand, uh, five hundred thousand rupiah, right? It's really something expensive on that day, where water is something something you it's really hard to find, because there has been a drought for three and a half years. It's a really long, it's really long time, you know, for a drought. So Elijah challenged the Baal prophet, "Can you guys the Baal prophet, right?" Call unto your God and send rain to this land. So the Baal prophet tried their 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 stuff, you know, their ritual. They cut themselves and then they are uh, yelling to the to to their God, but nothing happens. No rain, nothing. And then we're gonna learn there are three things that El that Elijah did to send the rain to create a miracle. In the time of hopelessness, in the time of drought, where rain is really, really something impossible, where water is something very, very expensive. But Elijah can, can ask God to send the rain unto the land. So in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30, what Elijah did, the first thing he did, is that he said to all of the people, "Come here to me." They came to him. So, the, uh, so Elijah called to the people of Israel. They came to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which has 
been turn, torn down. So the first thing that Elijah did is to gather the people. They come together in a unity to rebuild the altar of the Lord. So how, how it speaks for us for in these days. Yeah? So unity is the key. Today we are we are really separated from each other. You know, back uh, maybe in 2019 before COVID, we are really easy together with one another. You know, just come to to someone's house. We can create a cool. We can create a small community. We can make a prayer community, and then we gather every Sunday in our in our church. And it's really something easy to to be united together to worship Him, to praise Him, to learn the the Word of God, to serve one another. It's really really something easy. But this day we are being separated from one another right so the key is we need to go back to to in into the unity thing we need to to be united again so elijah called the people to come close and that one and then what what they did is they rebuilt the altar what is the altar is about our spiritual habit we need to rebuild our spiritual habit through the life of the community we need to rebuild one another spiritual habits because unity is the key for corporate action to create something big something big Yes, you can create something. You, you can praise by your own, in your own room, you can. But if you are doing collectively, it is much more impactful. And even God says when two or more, uh, two, three or more people gather together in His name, God will surely come. It doesn't mean that when you are alone that God is not present. It's not about that. But when we are doing collective effort there is something bigger happen imagine like a bonfire you know api unggun yeah bonfire where, where it is it is made of like several woods right several sticks collected in one place and then you burn it out that boom right but let's say you separated each stick one by one like everyone is holding one stick one stick one stick one stick one torch one torch it cannot be a bonfire right the fire won't be big enough to be called a bonfire it's just like a, a light stick you know it's it's just one personal fire but if you collect it in one place and then you make a bonfire right up yunggun itu it can be a big fire that's that's the same thing as unity Today we cannot. Maybe we are limited together in, uh, together in, uh, you know, in one place, but we can connect through Zoom, through online media, through uh, social media. It is essential to be united. In the times of drought, in the times of hopelessness, in the times of stagnancy. In the times of an, um, when you, you you are praying for something and nothing happens, you need the unity. You need the people. You need the community. And then what's next? Now it's getting more interesting. What Elijah did and next after they they collect uh, they are gathering, and then they built the altar. On First Kings eighteen chapter thirty four. God said he arranged the wood. Elijah arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did, they did it the third time. So what Elijah did after he after the altar has been built, and then uh, he put the sacrifice, the bull, and then he pour water in uh, into the altar, and not just a little bit of water. It says that there are four large jars with water. They pour it again. First time. He thought it was enough. Ah, 
One time is not enough. The second time, four large jars again become eight jars, right? And then we see, ah, it's not enough. We need the third time. Four large jars again. You know how much expensive it is? It is on the times of drought when water is really expensive and then they just pour it on the altar like it's like it's it's something very cheap like it's something very meaningless you know but it's not it's really something expensive they pour 12 jars full of water full of precious gold if if you are on that day it's like something something really really expensive they pour it on the altar 12 jars which represent the unity before on the first that we read before remember before that Elijah called the people of Israel Israel is made up of 12 tribes so it's the sacrifice of everyone the 12 tribes of Israel they give their best so the second point what we should do in the time of drought in the time of, of hopelessness in the time of solitude in the time of loneliness we need to have to have a total surrender to god we need to give our very best to god the first one is we should come together we should come as a family we should come as a community we should be connected with one another and the second one we need to have a total surrender in our life how it can be a total surrender you know, during those days, water is really expensive, right? And then people are maybe working hard uh, to get water, to collect enough water for their life. So their priority number one is gather enough water for their house, for their family, for themselves. That's their number one priori priority. Is to survive. These days, Maybe we focus to survive the days every day, every day, every single day. We forget the, prior the priority and the focus has been shifted. Why? What has been shifted? I mean, it's a normal days, maybe you think. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like normal days if you think logically. But number one priority should be connecting with God every single day. It's not about uh, surviving the day. It's about how we give the day unto the Lord. God wants to reset the priority. God wants to teach us, hey, it is important to survive the day, but you, you, did not, you do not need to worry. Why? Because I can give you sufficient things for you to survive the day. As long as you keep me as your number one priority. That is total surrender. The third thing that Elijah did is to pray and repent. First Kings 18 verse 37, it says, Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. So after, the, after they have gathered, in one place and then they build the altar they sacrificed uh, the most expensive stuff then elijah started to pray and he's not just uh, only pray god please send fire or uh, please send uh, the rain we already have uh, these things and everything we already have our sacrifice we have give everything we have please god do something miracle for us please god show us the way please god show us the solution no, no no elijah doesn't pray like that elijah pray please turn your heart back to us it, there's a sign of repentance on that day elijah pray on behalf of the israel we need to repent ourselves we need to keep our life holy we need to keep our life righteous we need to have a constant prayer every day we need to have more prayer times 
you know especially during these difficult times when you are alone in your house when you are have a lot of problems in your house maybe your family has a new problem during pandemic maybe you are suffering a loss of your loved ones these times we need more prayer and prayer not only for ourselves but also for our friends our family maybe for people that we don't know yet we need to have more prayer in times of drought it's, it's, it's similar like uh, when the disciple are gathering in one place after uh, the ascension of Christ what they did they pray right for 10 days consecutive days they pray they pray they pray to ask for the holy spirit to come so you may ask God, I pray uh, for something good to happen. You know, maybe you are in difficult, uh, let's say, in financial problem. And you, you, you pray for, please God, send job for me. I have already applied in some companies. Please God, uh, give a, a, good, a good way. Or maybe you are uh, studying and then you want to enter some uh, top university. And then you're praying, God, please open the way for me to enter that university, that major. Please, God, I need some scholarship for my university. Please, God, I want to go to to this school. Please, God, help my parents to find a new job. Please, uh, God, help my parents to build a new business. Please help my family to escape from from this... um, problem and etc et you know maybe you are asking for something that's not wrong your 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 is it's okay but the interesting we can learn from this story of Elijah and the Baal prophets is Elijah has the unity we need unity we need to have community to strengthen to support each other and then Elijah asked the people to give their best we need to have a total surrender in our life we need to give our life to Christ it's easy for us to be distracted this day because what because it's easier to focus on things that that are tangible that we can see that we can touch that we can collect like great score nilai um, bagus and then um, money you know it's things that we collect and then we can see oh i am i have an increase i can feel the different i can feel the impact when i'm learning really proper way when i'm doing the the assignment in a proper way when i work hard i can feel that my my, my money is going up but it's more difficult right to maintain something that is intangible something that we cannot see which is our relation with christ our prayer life our repentance our heart our focus our holy life holy living it, we cannot see we cannot measure it but it is more essential than those things of the earth and the third thing is to have constant prayer right when we do when we do those three things in these times of difficulty solitude hopelessness we are having a perseverance you know we are we are increasing our perseverance but does doing those things really give an answer to our problems right i mean we want some we want some some solution right we want something or some blessing right when we, when we give something we need we need to get to get back right let's say oh god i already gave my everything i give my life i give all my time for you i give uh, my money uh, my my tithing and then everything i give for you i dedicate my life i commit my life to serve you right Please, God, then you help me, right? I help you, you help me. <laughs> I mean, that, maybe that's our mindset, right? But we can see on 1 Kings 18, verse 38, how God answered Elijah, how God answered his prayer, how God answered 
the sacrifice that has been given. First Kings 18 chapter uh, verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also lick up the water in the trench. So what you can see that Elijah firstly asks that he is doing this all of things. You know, gathering the people of Israel, building the altar of God, sacrificing a bull, sacrificing water, pray, pray for repentance. He is asking for rain because there's a drought happening. And then the challenge, the competition is whoever get their, uh, the sacrifice get be, get be, uh, get eaten, right? get eaten by the by their god like the baal or god is the one who wins right so nobody can uh, start a fire they need to ask their their god to send a fire and then consume the the sacrifice right the offering and then the, the goal is to to have the rain poured out into the land right because there's a drought but what interesting here is first God doesn't directly answer with what we pray. Let's say we pray for a financial problem, you know, we pray for a financial solution, we pray for good grades, we pray for scholarship, we pray for entry to our top university. Maybe God doesn't directly answer with with uh, passing good grades you know acceptance letter and everything or scholarship sometimes God got answer through things that is fire God doesn't send rain to the land directly what he did send is the fire not water not miracle not something maybe they, they the people of israel pray for right well it is a show that it, people of israel can see oh god is real the fire came down right but maybe they are asking but where is the rain okay there's a god of of the God of Israel. But the rain is not pouring. It's not coming. We can see the fire uh, consume our offering. But where is the rain? Where is the miracle? Where is the solution? Where is our blessing? But let me remind you that fire precedes something big. A fire will be followed by something big. When Moses met, uh, met God in the bush, uh, in the fiery, in the fiery bush, after that, there is a freedom for the people of Israel. When the disciples are praying and praying and praying, and then the Holy Spirit came down, filled their soul, filled their spirit. And then there are the next thing happens. Three thousand people surrender their life. There is a great revival happens when there is a fire. In times of drought, maybe God doesn't directly answer with our prayer, with our requests, with our needs, with our wants. But first, God wants for us to get into his presence first that's what we need first fire remember fire signifies god's presence the fire comes before the rain you can you can read it uh, on, by your own it's on the first 44 and then 45 is that later on that the the rain has is is really pouring it's it's a great rain pouring on the land after Three and a half years of drought. But the fire comes first. Why? Because we need to get inside to God's presence. 
we need to have God's presence in our life. We need to acknowledge God as our number one priority in these days. Maybe we are being hopeless. Maybe we are we don't know what to do. Maybe we are still ah this is always normal days, normal days, stagnant days. We are <clears throat> just survive, you know, just survive these daily days. There are no ways every day is normal. Why when we enter into God's presence presence every day, every single day, we enter into his presence, we connected with God, we, we are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we can bring a revival to our life, to our family, to our friends, to our community, to our school. We, we will be changing others. We will, we will be an example for others. How can you be hopeful? How can you be still persevere? How can you be still op- being optimistic? How can you still pray at this time? How can you still can give so much for me to help others how you can be these people even though the times are really difficult when the time is 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 is, is solitude when we cannot do so much but ca- but God can do a lot of things that enable us to give a lot of stuff for others when we enter into God's, God's presence, when we are filled with His Spirit, when the fire of God, when the fire of Spirit fill us, then it enables us to be God's messenger in our world of life. These days, we need to stretch our hope. We need to stretch our perseverance. We need to stretch our faith. Because we know we are God's vessel. Even though it is restricted, we cannot go anywhere, we cannot meet with people directly. But there are a lot of ways that we can reach others these days, right? So remember, the fire will precede the rain, will precede the revival. When the fire is constantly burning inside of you, you will look that revival is coming to your family, to your friends, to your community, to your life, to every aspect of your life. God will change you from glory to glory to glory. As long as you are reunited, you surrender yourself wholly to God, And you have a constant prayer every day to Him. I hope you have uh, you learned something today. Remember that today maybe you are experiencing drought, you are experiencing loneliness, you are experiencing hopelessness, maybe you are experiencing uh, solitude, or you are just like "Eh, surviving the days. You can change. You can change the day. You can change your life. But first we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Stretch your faith. And let God stretch your life. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that, that today we have uh, we can learn something new. That God, you want to use us in a new ways to stretch our faith, to stretch our hope, to stretch our perseverance in these times god please help us to manage our life to have a focus on you to to be to put you in number one priority in our life so we we will surrender our life wholly to you god please keep us safe keep us healthy in these days and we want to be uh the doer of the word and let uh your glory can be shown from our life Thank you, Jesus. We surrender to you. We surrender our life wholly. Please use us as your vessel to be a blessing for others. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you. I hope you have a great day. See you next time. God bless.